Well, hi everybody. This is Angelo Quinones and Yerisha in Ministries. I'm Ministries is Jijain to give you dependable and accurate answers that come straight from God's holy and inspired word, the Bible. And I am a born again evangelical Trinitarian. Okay, I believe in all the essentials of the historic Christian faith. Okay, so you're dealing with somebody who's, you know, 55 years old, who was born in 1965, and I chuckle as I give my real age. And uh, I went to Nyack Theological Seminary, having been born again. Okay, so I, I guess that's, that's in the perfect tense. All right, um, you know, in uh, 1990, I was born, like I said before, 1965, born again in 1990. And, um, you know, went to a Nyack Theological Seminary uh, around very, in, in a very, in the, in, in the late stage of my life, basically, in the 2000s. You know, I started college in 2002. And I wasn't interested in college at all until I became a Christian. And then I heard uh, the radio station on MCA. Actually, um, I heard uh, uh, the uh, radio station uh, called uh, WMCA in New York City, and I saw the commercial, actually heard the commercial, on the radio of Nyack Theological Seminary. And so I went there, and I found it my ministry years after that, um, called I Am Ministries, because Jesus said, I am so many times. Okay, <laughs> so that's it about me. Now, when you want to reach Jehovah's Witnesses, because you're going to really have to know how to deal with all different kinds of Jehovah's Witnesses. They're not really witnessing for Jehovah, but we have to call them what they call themselves, okay? So the thing is that they are called Jehovah's Witnesses, and we all know that they're not really witnessing for Jehovah, okay? All right, will you contend for the persons of God, okay? I believe that's recorded in Job chapter 13, verse 8. And uh, incidentally, the, the Hebrew word there is panim, panim. And I haven't seen a number, the strongest number in a long time, but I believe that's a 6440, something like that. I haven't seen it in a while. So um, it actually can mean faces, persons, or, um, you know, person, or just face, you know. So um, they're not witnessing for Jehovah. They're not the prophet of God. Okay, 1972. They gave that uh, self-glorification, self-glorifying statement, we're the prophet of God, you know, even before that. But I remember that, that they said that in uh, 1972. Uh, not that I was old enough to remember that, but I'm just saying um, that's what the, the information I was given that on, on April Fool's Day. Poetic justice. I mean, you know, these are the same people who prophesied, and we'll get into this text, this famous text. These are the same people who prophesied that nobody was going to go to the moon, okay, in a book entitled The Truth Shall Set You Free in 1943. And 24 people did go to the moon, either, either you know, orbited the moon or hovered around the moon or, you know, uh, landed on the moon. I mean, you can't make it up, though. But let's get into this. So we can't trust our witnesses. Okay, we cannot trust the witnesses. Okay, they made themselves untrustworthy. Okay, they they forfeited their right to be trusted. And this 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 garbage that the light is getting brighter and brighter. Well, Jesus has something to say about that. If that light in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Okay, you can't you know make a prophecy that that Jesus was going to uh, you know come back. In 1914, and and he didn't come back, and then you cover your hides by saying, well, yeah, yeah, but he came invisibly. I mean, you know, he just came invisibly. I mean, you guys are worse than Harold Camping. I mean, he prophesied the coming of, of Christ two times, and he got blasted on our side of the camp for that, okay? If you don't believe that, just, just check out the debate between Harold Camping and James White, Okay? A debate that actually James White won, miraculously so, because he really loses a lot of the debates that, that he takes a part of. Like the James Aiken debate, I mean, you know, I mean, just, you, James Aiken wiped the floor with him. Okay? So that's just the deal. So at least he won that. And it's easy to beat Harold Camping and Gail Ripplinger. Okay? If you can't beat them in a debating campaign, well, then you're in trouble. Okay? I made this ministry called I Am Ministry. It's really called Ego Home... Um, Ministries, 
Ego Amy Home Ministries, but that was too long, so I just cut it to, you know, Ego Amy, and, you know, just in case people don't understand what that means, you know, like newcomers and stuff like that, people like that, well, I just said, you know, Ego, I called it Ego, um, you know, I called it I Am Ministries. I made it not to repeat the same mistakes that James White did. What are the mistakes? Before we even get into the Greek, we have to not repeat the same mistakes James White did in his debate and campaign against Greg Stafford. What are they? Well, he wasn't filled with the Holy Spirit. That's number one. Number two, he didn't have command of any of the biblical languages at all. Okay? None. None. And he didn't quote the scriptures uh, often enough. That's number three. Number four, he didn't answer the great question when he was interrogate, interrogated. Okay, um, is the Father through God? Yes or no? Just say yes and move on. What's the big thing? Just say yes. Listen, you can lose a debate, and this is the full Greek, const uh, full Greek construction of uh, John, um, uh, John uh, eight uh, fifty eight. So stand by for that. This is really part of the Logos series. The full Greek construction of uh, John 1, 1, Alpha, Beta, and Gamma, and also uh, known as the progression of thought. But, you know, I'm stretching it to, to other passages of Scripture that comes into uh, play when we're dealing with so-called Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, you can lose a debate by just one little thing that you do or don't do. Now, George Bush probably lost his presidency, who knows, by looking at his watch. Okay? Just by looking at his watch. All right, because people remember stuff like that. Just one little thing that you do. I'm talking about in a public debate. One little thing that you do can throw everything off. That's the only thing that, that people remember that he did. Okay, so I'm just, that's just it. So, so what was number five? Well, I mean, number five, he was too proud. So you put all those things together and you're bound to lose. Now, um, to move to read it more smoothly, and I'll get back to this in a second. Let's get a um, let's get a, a an app, okay, that doesn't have any parsing in it, okay. All right, and that uh, that's this is John's gospel right here. That's just a sort of a, a different way of of saying or writing John. Iota is actually ten. And eta nowadays called eta is eight, right? So let's go all the way to the end there, and then just go backwards because I think I believe this has like 59 verses. Okay, so let's just go back here. Very long passage, you know, 57 though. Wait, 57, uh, 58. Oh, so these verses are not that not that big. <clears throat> all right, so it says over here, uh, apen autois ha. Jesus. Amen, amen. Okay, Lego. Who mean? Prin, Abraham. Now, check this out. This is the word uh, that I want to use. Okay. Genestai, ego, amy. So that's not, I mean, that's not a long verse at all. Okay. Now, let's just check out some simple constructions over here. Okay. First of all, let's check out what this verse does not say. Okay, and to, in order to do that, okay, all right, we're going to have to go to the New World Translation. Now, I don't know if they brushed up their mistake. It wasn't really a mistake. It was intentional. This perfect indefinite tense garbage. It, there's no such thing in Greek as a perfect indefinite tense. Okay, let's go to the New Testament side of things, and let's go to the Gospel of John. And let's see if they do the same thing 70 years after the New World Translation was even born. So let's check it out. Okay. Let's go basically all the way to the end, basically, almost, you know. <clears throat> and uh, it says over here, Jesus said to them, Most truly I say to you, before Abraham came into existence, I have been. They do the same stink. The light is getting stinking thing. <laughs> the light is getting brighter and brighter. Really? The light is getting brighter and brighter. 
Is it bright? I think these people are playing with light bright. Remember that toy, light bright? You've got the little pegs and you put it in a blackboard full of holes and then there's a little light in the back and then it lights up the pegs. Huh? Is that what's going on? They're playing with light bright? Do the same stinking thing. Don't tell me that the light is getting brighter and brighter. I can cry. Go on, stop. It's not getting brighter and brighter. You see, this is a same stinking thing. It says over here, a god. It's nothing new under the sun, and it's nothing new in the tower. Okay, I mean, you go to, in this app, you go to Hebrews. I, I wonder if this is the New World Translation of 1950. It's the same stuff. There is no indef perfect indefinite change in Greek. None. 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 It doesn't exist. Now, if it exists in other languages, so what? We're not talking about other languages. We're talking about the Greek. The Greek. That's what we're talking about. Perfect indefinite tense. I have been. Now, it doesn't say it. So I write it. Oh, Angelo, you, when I talk to, you know, these runny-nosed JWs. Oh, Angelo, you're trying to change the Bible. Are you giving us the the Greek and then the Hebrew and you're trying to change. I'm not trying to change anything. You guys did change the Bible. You did. And actually, before we get into the, the Greek again, okay, and I'm going to be using uh, this resource. You know what I'm saying? And I hope it, it yeah, it did. <laughs> it kept its plates. I mean, I, I, I don't know what to say. Magic wheat, and before I get into this stuff, okay? Magic wheat and corn, Russell, sold so-called magic wheat and corn to his own people. And then he was taken to court, and there was nothing, quote, I think the government said this, there was nothing, quote, intrinsically valuable uh, to this magic wheat and corn, end quote. Words to that effect. Check out uh, Jehovah the Watchtower by Walter Martin. Dr. Walter Martin, by the way, okay? You understand what I mean? The Great Pyramid of Egypt is on par with the Bible? Really? Is it? It's on par with the Bible. It's just like if I would say Mount Rushmore, which Donald J. Trump, okay, Trump, one in his face with the other dudes. I would, If I were to say that that is on par with the Bible, I mean, I'd be laughed out of the ministry. But this second... Okay, said it, Russell, the sucker, you understand what I mean? The sucker, he said it, and nobody gets two hoots in hell about it. Except for, for us Trinitarians. It's a sucker born every time for these chumps. And if that's not enough, they said that no man was ever going to go to the moon. The opposite of what the Mormon church said, or was it when you go to the moon, you're going to find little conies, little, little creatures, conies. Maybe they thought that David Cohn, the ex-Yankee and uh, Blue Jay was going to, met by the way, yeah, my goodness, was going to pitch on the moon. All right. I mean, you can't trust these guys, guys. <laughs> okay. Yes, man. You can't. I mean, they gave these false dates, 1974, I mean, 1874, 1879, 81, 19, 14, 18, 25, 41, 75, 88, and 95. It's like a football game or something, like the Super Bowl. And then nobody can get married 
they put that edict, okay, you're a lukewarm, you know, whatever you are, if you get married, and then the president get mar gets married in 1952. Hypocrisy. They did that in 1938. Fulfilling the prophecy, actually, or the teaching of uh, the Apostle Paul, that people who teach stuff, such things are, you know, they're teaching doctrines of demons. And they go, they go on and do it. The tower. Russell and his uh, buddies and pals who, uh, you know, made the New World Translation. Actually, well, I mean, he, he, before, he, he didn't do it, but uh, he couldn't read any Greek in court. And then the honchos, getting back to them, they couldn't read any Hebrew or Greek in court. What about it? So you can, you can really trust an organization like that? I don't think so. Okay? I don't. I don't. All right, so that's just a deal. Let's get back to that. I mean, I could wax eloquent on the Jehovah's Witnesses who said that Jesus should be worshipped in 1954. And then they deleted in the 1960s and 90s. They don't believe that you should smoke tobacco, but they, were, they, were, they had a part in a tobacco company. They don't believe that you should join the army, but they, made, uh, they, they had, okay, they made... Military parts for the army. You can't make it up. It's a made up, snotty nose religion, or really a cult, or shit. And it's being exposed every single day. All right, guys, let's, guys, let's get back to this. It says over here a pen, okay. That's the word said, spelled out, and I'm right next to the 58 over there. I wish it was white. Uh, uh, A-pen. And that's spelled out Epsilon Iota B Epsilon No. Nowadays it's called Ni. That looks like a V is not a V. The one, two, three, four. The fifth letter in A-pen, or I don't care how you pronounce uh, A-pen. It could be I-pen or uh, E-pen or whatever the case may be. But just note that if, if you're looking at a letter in Greek that looks like a V, there is no V in, in Biblical Greek or Standard Greek, okay? There is a V in Modern Greek. The Vita can be a B or a V, but we're not talking about Modern Greek, okay? And of course, there's a soft breathing marker over the second letter of the diphthong. There, a diphthong is a combination of two vowels. Okay, two vowels making one sound, like in the in, in the in the word eight. You know, the number eight. In that word eight, the E and I are making one sound, okay? And you gotta circumflex over that. Incidentally, that's the same uh, symbol that you're gonna see over the inflectional the inflectional particle. O, O, with special force. But we'll get into that when we see uh, the argument, okay, of uh, of uh, Hebrews 1 8 okay and that's just the deal and I use 1st Timothy chapter 6 verse 20 and Matthew chapter 15 verse 28 to prove my point that that's not special force being used there in Hebrews 1 8 but special definiteness so the God oh God the deal Epen Altois now Altois is spelled out Alpha Upsilon with the uh, soft breathing so it's not how toys it's Altois now, some of these diphthongs have different pronunciations in modern Greek, okay? I'm not talking about modern Greek. I'm talking about biblical Greek. So, it's ow. The first two vowels are making an ow sound, okay? It's called a diphthong. Not dip, but diphthong. Incidentally, in the Manual Grammar of the Greek New Testament by Manti and Dana, they have diphthong spelled two different ways, <laughs> Okay, on page 20 of their manual, 1950 manual. Now, uh, Alpha Upsilon, nowadays it's called Epsilon. It's an I class nowadays. The, the U looking letter, I'm looking at the... Remember, you read Greek from uh, left to right, not from right to left like Hebrew. So you read Greek like you do uh, English, Spanish, French, Latin, Filipino. I mean... You know, and there's other languages as well. Now, in order to break up, um, you know, to parse a word, 
you can go backwards in Greek, like if you're really studying the word. I'm not saying when you're reading it, when you're studying it, you could just go backwards. If you choose to, you know, I like to go forwards or backwards. It doesn't make a difference to me. But people are sometimes taught to go backwards, especially on a verb. So that way they can check out the, um, you know, the... Uh, the the tense what what tense you know what's the what's the what's the personal ending what's the connecting vowel if there's a, a tense formative what's that like in uh stesetai in the greek Septuagint, um you know he will stand you know and you check out the tense formative sigma there and a sigma can be a, te a, a tense formative uh you know pointing out the future you know, we use will in English, so they use an S, they use a sigma sometimes in, in Greek words to point out that this in a future tense. And then you have the future tense stem like that, you could work backwards. But you know, you read uh, Greek from um, left to right though. Epen altoi, so altoi is spelled out alpha, upsilon, tau, omicron, nowadays called omicron, okay, iota, and then it has a circumflex over that, and then final sigma. And basically, all of these letters look like our English letters. Okay, A-U-T-O-I-S. Okay, sometimes the upsilon is transliterated, like in the word kurios, into a Y in Greek. So anyway, Apen said uh, to them, that's in the date to plural. Okay, that's in the date to plural. Autois, now remember, you know... Um, uh, Greek nouns, uh, the you know, the Greek language nowadays, and let's stay with Biblical Greek, okay, has about four or five cases. If that wasn't the case, no pun intended, before, okay. They used to teach seven or eight cases, and there was there was always an argument, and there's there's an argument now, um, if the vocative, which which is a direct address, when somebody is talking to someone, that's a direct address. Okay, in Hebrews one eight, in um, you know uh, Hebrews ten seven. Okay, in uh, you know when uh, Thomas or Thomas uh, actually uh, talks to Jesus, and then Hapeasmu um, Hakuriasmu, you know the Lord of me and the God of me, and. Um, so you have you have uh, four or five cases nowadays. They like to do away with cases because the less of Greek you have to remember, the best, the better it is for the student. That's why people don't even like some people. Some Greek professors don't even like don't even like to teach, uh, you know, all of the paradigms. Okay, they just like for you to know. Um, how things operate and if you know how things operate okay either in a noun or a verb especially in verbs okay <laughs> then you have an idea of you know how to parse any word okay there are some irregularities and you just you just jot, jot, you jot those down and sometimes there are not a lot of those in the Greek New Testament okay but anyway, so let's get on here. Apen, altois is in the dative case. So, I mean, you have the nominative case, which is the, the case of designation. For example, the subject nominative, for God so loved the world. Okay, that's not this here, but for, uh, uh, for God so loved the world. Who's doing the action of loving the world? Well, God. Okay? Caught the ass there in the text of John 3.16. That's in a nominative case. And one of the uses of the nominative case is subject nominative. God is a subject of the verb. Okay? Agapison, I believe that's the um, the word there. Now, uh, I believe that's in the aorist tense. And uh, the eta is actually, uh, I think it was lengthening, uh, lengthening from an alpha. And it's pointing out the, the um, it's pointing out the, uh, the, the aorist uh, tense there. Okay? And the ending also, and, and the stem itself points it out. Everything points it out, but there are clues that are more stark than others, you know. Um, so, that's, that's all you have. Nominative, let me just spit them out. Nominative, accusative, vocative, uh, dative, and genitive. Okay? You have those. 
And so nominative has to do with designation. Um, accusative has to do with limitation. Okay, the extent of the hearing, right? The extent of the hearing. Um, found in Praxis Apostolon, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 22, verse 9, I believe. That they didn't understand. Not that they didn't just hear the voice. They didn't understand the voice, though. That's the better translation in the King James. So the NIV and NASB comes along and cleans up the mistake of the King James. It was a wonderful version. I was just hearing the King James um, Bible the other day by Alexandra, I think, uh, Scorby. And man, it's just so wonderful. The King James is a wonderful translation. It really is. It's one of the best. It's one of the best. I, I will put it um, with uh, the NIV and, NA, and the NASB as being the three top Bibles, just for me, you know. English Bibles, okay? But it's not the standard. And this idea that Jesus is found more in the King James, it is not. Okay, I'm talking about particular, um, you know, um, editions. But if you check out the strongest uh, concordance for the NIV, Jesus is found, okay, um, 1,241 times to the King James' uh, uh, 971 times. There's a count of 270. I'll, be, I'll win the election. I mean, I win the election by 270 electoral votes, okay, to whatever, okay? To, uh, what would it be? To, uh, to, uh, man, that's almost a tie. I, 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 we need Congress to break up the tie right there. And that's a two, 269, 269, so I just won it in Congress, I guess, right? Okay. The House of Representatives will do that. And then you got to get into the, the minutiae of that. But anyway, 270 times more. Um, Jesus is found more, 200, by count of 270 times more in NIV than the King James. Let's so just put it like that, according to Strong's, okay, uh, 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 exhaustive concordance, which is the greatest concordance I haven't seen of any concordance anywhere. Okay, so anyway, a pen, out twice. So, I mean, then a genitive case has to do with definition, attribution, or um, description, right? Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. That's the genitive of time. So that is a limiting case also, but as to kind. What kind of a heart? An unbelieving heart. The heart of unbelief, you see? Of unbelief? Well, that will be in a genitive case. What kind of a heart? There you go. And then the vocative case, that's easy. That has just one, you know, one use. That of direct address. Kurie, kurie, you know. Lord, Lord, right? Te, te, te mu, te mu, my God, my God, okay? He's talking to God. So, and then the dative case has to do with interest. He lied to God, to Teo, proving that the Holy Spirit is a person, by the way. Incidentally, this Greek word apen is used for the Holy Spirit a whole bunch of times in the Acts of the Apostles, and not only in the Acts of the Apostles, but sprinkled throughout the entire New Testament, okay? Apen means said, okay? I believe Amer in the Hebrew. It would be, you know, that the Holy Spirit, uh, say Amer, uh, says, uh, said something to, to whomever. You understand what I mean? All right, now anyway, let's get to it. So it's Apen, Altois is in the dates of case, okay? Uh, said to them, to them, it's in the plural. You know the paradigm for altas, altas, altu, alto, altan, and then altoi, alton, altois. So this is the data plural, and then altus. Okay, that's the paradigm for this uh, third person personal pronoun from the altas paradigm. Paradigm. Okay. Apen altois, and then it says. Oh, it says over here, Ha Jesus, but I just saw an app that this, the article is not there. But you know that this is definite anyway. It's not going to say what well, A Jesus said to them. No, that's not, that's, there's no such thing. Okay? Unless you have, you know, like uh, 12 Jesuses, you know, you know, in a boat. And then, you know, one of them says something to, you know, well, A Jesus. Well, a man named, I don't know how you would say it, right? <laughs> okay. Apen Altois, Alpha Upsilon, nowadays called Epsilon, okay, Tau, nowadays called Tuff, so that Tau, is, is sound, the name is sort of different, but it's the same thing, T. And then, uh, Omicron, 
nowadays called Omicron and then Iota and Final Sigma with the circumflex over the Iota. Uh, so you would translate, right, uh, Jesus first, right? Ha is not going to be translated. You're not going to say that Jesus said to them, but that Jesus said to them, okay? Amen, amen. Incidentally, Jesus is called the Amen. Okay, all right, and I, I believe in in the cluster of titles, <clears throat> he's all he called the uh, Hey Archi, okay, Hey Archi, or E Archi, in Revelation chapter three verse fourteen, the beginning or the ruler. Now, if you're gonna say that he had a beginning, well, you know, you're making a mistake because Alpha and Omega, all Jehovah's Witnesses say Alpha and Omega in the book of Revelation is Jehovah and he's called the beginning. In the end. So what he had a beginning? NIV says Rula, the Rula. And it's, incidentally, Arche is used, I believe, in like um oh Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 27, something like that. I have to look at it. That, you know, God it rules and the Greek word is arche there that's what it is at least in uh, Sir Lancelot Brenton uh, Greek Septuagint copy okay uh, done uh, in around 1851 has arche there okay all right so Apen Autois said uh, said uh, to them and then, Ha Yesus. And Yesus, what's the paradigm for Yesus? Well, Yesus, um, the paradigm for Yesus is, is, is strange because it, it's, it's not, it's, 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 it's partially declined. It, does, it doesn't, it's not, it's not a different structure for every single case. So you have Yesus, Yesu, Yesu, Yesun. It's not like theos that's, that's fully declined, you know, so it's a theos, theu, theo, theon. So how can you tell that Jesus, the word Jesus is in the dative case or the genitive case? Well, by the article. The article um, can point that out. So it could be tu yesu, okay, of Jesus, and to yesu, to Jesus, right? Or to Yesu, or uh, you know, and, and also if it says uh, Yesu Cristo, right? Then you could, and, 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 and if you don't have the article, well, the Cristo can actually let you know what case, okay, the word uh, Yesu is in. And if it's Cristo, it'll be in the, it'll be in the dative case. If it's Cristo, it'll be in a genitive case. That's another clue. All right, so um, a pen. Altois Ha Yesu. So uh, let's get back to Ha. Ha, I mean, can be pronounced in, in, in Biblical Greek two different ways. Ha or Ho. Don't say O because you have a rough breathing here. Leave the O pronunciation for the modern Greek um, side of things, okay? Like O Canada. The country of Canada will be O Canada. Okay, if it will be a, 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 a feminine. Um, you know, sort of a construction. It will be e Turkia. The country of Turkey will be e Turkia. Okay, but O Canada will be um, masculine. So I mean, if you're reading a Bible that said, you know, there's a modern Bible. Incidentally, uh, the person who lived in Greece. I don't know if he was born there or lived in there from the uh, New World Translation Committee. I mean, he didn't even know what the subject of the of John 1, 1 was. I mean, it's a disgrace. I mean, I could pop it up right now. Praise God. Let me just do that. It will take me great pains to do. I mean, come on. You're going to tell me that you're a translator in this famous committee and you don't know that logos is the subject of the of the of the of the verb here and the subject of the of the same verb in John 1:1b 1, 1 and the subject of uh, uh, the similar of uh, the same verb I should say in uh, a John 1:1c 1, 1 which I affectionately call this a serious section because if you're born again you're going to believe in the deity of Christ. You're going to tell me that you're a trans you're you're in the committee of translating a Bible, by the way, that comes from Johannes Greberg. 
a Bible that comes from your hand. A, a, a witch he used to talk to demon spirits to make his translation, and then you you borrow four or five copies from the Johannes Greenberg Foundation to 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 actually help you translate the Bible. And then you don't believe in Halloween, and you don't believe in Christmas, and you don't believe in Easter, and you don't believe in Mother's Day and Father's Day and all that stuff, you know? And you don't believe in New Year's and Valentine's Day. I mean, you're sweetheart. You're lucky you don't get dumped. Incidentally, the message is a hideous translation. Jesus said on the cross, oh, well, why did you dump me? Is Jesus on Twitter or Facebook? He said to the Father, why did you dump me? I mean, what in the hell is that? I mean, that literally. I mean, that literally. I mean, it's just like uh, Fro Griswold, the, the wonderful Baptist preacher that um, I, I think he, he was talking to, uh, he's talking about... Um, May may your money uh, perish in hell with you. I mean, I think the Apostle Paul said that, or Peter to Simon, who wanted to buy the Holy Spirit, <laughs> and or and then Fro Griswold said something about. I mean that literally. What the hell is that? What in God's hell? I make no apologies. But anyway, I mean, I I well, I. I I mean, we talk about the New World Translation, but the Thomas Jefferson Bible has no miracles of Christ. And then the Joseph Smith, uh, you know, um, you know, Bible. I mean, is it is I mean, it's a joke. All right, let's get to this again, though. I mean, I could I could I could go on and on with these things with these cults and sex. You don't know that Lagos, which is a nominative case construction, is the subject of the census? I know that things can be kind of tricky. And I already mentioned something that could be tricky if you're not careful with it. I mean, if you don't know anything in Greek. I mean, what's the subject of the census? Well, look at the context. It's a quotation from Psalm 45. Incidentally... Hatheos is used as a vocative in the Psalter, uh, the Greeks of Tuchin, 63 times, according to Murray J. Harris, who wrote uh, Jesus as God. Great book. It could have been written a little bit more for the layman. You need a ruler to read the thing sometimes, you understand what I'm saying? Okay. Goodness gracious. Sometimes the best things, sometimes the best books are just the simplest books to read. <sighs> All right, I mean, it's a great book, don't get me wrong. So anyway, I mean, you don't know that Lagos is spelled out Lambda. I hate that, that, that pronunciation, Lambda. Lambda, Omicron, Gamma, or Gamma. I don't care how you pronounce that, Omicron and Final Sigma. I mean, you don't know that's the subject of the census? The Sigma's not telling you? What the, I mean, what kind of a committee is this, though? Oh, was that? Okay. What possibly could be the subject of the sentence there? It can't be our chi. That's an additive case. There's, all, there's no other noun in John 1-1 uh, uh, Alpha. And you're telling me that, 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 that you don't know what the subject of the sentence is in John 1-1-B? The, the, the nominative versus the accusative? You're going to come out with the accusative being the subject? Is that it? You don't know? The accusative case is uh, the case of, like I said before, limitation as to extent and not as to kind, though. I gave you an example of Praxis of Pastelone, actually, a Pastelone, chapter 22, verse 9. The King James is a walking contradiction at that point. They didn't hear the voice? Well, John, not John, but <laughs> the Acts, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, verse 7, says that they hear, they did hear the voice. So what's the deal? All right, I mean, goodness gracious, I have to comment on, on anything. I mean, you don't know that, that Lagos is a subject of the sentence or logos. It's amazing, guys. It's absolutely amazing that people will fall for, I mean, this cult of the Jehovah's Witnesses. It's absolutely amazing. Let's go back to uh, chapter Eta or Eta, okay? 
So let's go back. All right, so, um, man, I'll tell you. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Apen Altois said to them, now, Ha is a weak demonstrative. A weak demonstrative. It means much more than just the in Greek, okay? I mean, it can do a lot of neat things. It can be a pronoun, that one. It can be used for special definiteness. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 1 verse 8. Oh, God. Not like old Timothy with special force. Oh, Timothy, uh, this, this, and that. No, oh, God. You're the God. The God. Oh, God. With special definiteness. There's nothing else to be used in Greek. So the article ha had to be used. And because that has to be ha, well, theos has to be used. So you're going to have ha theos looking like the subject of the, I can't say of the verb. There's no verb there in, in Hebrews 1, 8, you understand? So the subject of the, it looks like the subject of the, of the sentence or, or the clause, you know. But it's not. Ha theos is found first. Okay, that's not a big deal in Greek, I understand, but that's found first, so that, that's a clue that hatranas actually, okay, all right, it's the subject of the sentence there, or the, the, the clause, or whatever you want to call it. So the position is very stark. The quotation is very stark. God is not called the throne anywhere, so that's very stark. Okay. Hatheos is used internally in the book in, in Hebrews 10, 7. So that's very stark. Okay. That's stark. Okay. Like John Starks. Remember that basketball player, by the way? I, I used to like John Starks. He was a little feisty guy. It was a little. It was six foot three. Dunk Don Jordan and, 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 and Horace Grant at the same time. Uh, I used to like, I mean, that's when the Knicks were the Knicks, though. I mean, even though they didn't win a bloody thing in the 1990s, but goodness, they gave me some fun, though. I'll tell you that right now. Don't give me anything now. All right, I mean, I'm talking about the Knicks. I already talked about the Mets, the Knicks, I mean, you know, and the Tower. All right, so uh, A-Pin, Altois, and Ha is called a weak demonstrative. That article is called a weak the monster. You know the paradigm, okay? Ha he ta, tu te stu, do te to, tan ten tan. Or tan ten ta with an omicron. And then hoi hai ta, this time with an alpha, the plural side of the uh, the paradigm. Plural articles. Ton ton ton. And tois uh, tais tois and tu stas ta. Also with an alpha. I have to be careful. Sometimes I say with an omicron and I go back and say, oh my god, I got to delete that. You know, that's just a, so that's but incidentally, there is no indefinite paradigm for biblical Greek. For, <laughs> for, <laughs> talking like I'm from down south or something, like from Texas. I mean, I mean, I just that's just the deal. So, the thing is that there is no indefinite paradigm for biblical uh greek of the um yeah the indefinite um you know definite article paradigm there is one in in modern greek anas mia anna so those are the nominative singular um i mean i mean that'll be the paradigm right there can't be any plural right <laughs> i don't know about that but anyway those are you know that's the nominative side of the paradigm right mia being uh feminine anas being uh masculine and anna being uh neuter Okay? Well, I should say it like this. M, F, and then uh, N. Okay? <laughs> say it like that. Those articles or indefinite articles don't exist in biblical uh, Greek. Just tell the witnesses that. Okay? And haste wasn't used either. The Greek word Allah, it's not the Allah of the Muslims. It means but this, but that, you know, but, B-U-T. That's not used either. You know, enarche in halagos. Okay? Halagos in pros. Enarche in halagos. Okay. Kai halaga sem prastantean. Ara. But okay. Um um you know al uh halagas uh ain tuteo. But the lagas was of God or but the lagas wasn't God. 
Okay? That's not there. Could have been there. This this actually okay could have been there also in but it's not. Best case scenario for Jehovah's Witnesses according to John 1 1 and Archi Epoyes in Hate Astan Lagan. Is that there? No. Even in Hebrew. Okay, Bereshit, Bar Elohim, Hadabar? No. In the beginning, God created the, the what? Or in the beginning, God created uh, the Lagos? Going back to the Greek scenario, it's not there. I come up with six best case scenarios for Jehovah's Witnesses that are not even in the text. And Arche Epoyes in Hate Astan Lagan. And Arche Egeneta Halagas. In the beginning, you know, the word emerged, so the word, word was made or came into being, or whatever the case may be. And you're going to see that, that word for Abraham, but it's not even found for Jesus anywhere. Incidentally, verse 15, or 16, I think it's 15, of uh, John chapter 1 says, you know, John the Baptist says that, um, uh, protos mu, for he was before me, protos mu, protos before and mu me. And John the ba Baptist talks about Jesus that he was before him. Well, Jesus never said that of the Father, that the Father was protos mu before me. He never said that. You can tell that to the, you say that to the witnesses. You understand what I'm saying? All right. And let me just uh, get that for you real quick, okay? Let me get that. We're going to get into uh, <laughs> John 8, 58 very, very soon. The complete thing. And uh, let me see over here. <clears throat> Uh, Protos Mu. Where's Protos Mu at, huh? Oh, boy. Protos Mu. Protos Mu. Where is Protos Mu? Okay. Um, verse 15. Is this chapter 1? Okay, I just want to make sure. Yeah, Alpha. That's 1. And then Ioannes. So There's another spelling there. Okay, Marturi. Marturi, a witness... Concerning Peri, uh, out to uh, him, uh, and que crage, que crage. That is like in the perfect tense there, to reduplicating a kappa, right? And then egon. Let me see how tas in han. That's an accusative. That's an accusative relative pronoun. Ape, apon. Uh, let me see here. Uh, I'm trying to find Protos Mu over here. Mu there. Da, 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 da. Hati. Here it goes. Protos Mu. There you go right there. Protos Mu. Spelled out just above the 16. Spelled out B. Ro. Never say Ro. The Greeks don't like that. Say Ro. Ro. <laughs> Ro. And I chuckle because I remember a story in uh, Get Smart. Uh, Get Smart used to be a television show that came out in the 1960s. And it, it went on for five years, five seasons. And, you know, he was a, a stumbling and fumbling and mumbling uh, James Bond uh, character, but in a comedic sense of the word. And Don Adams was perfect for the part. Okay. And so... He was kidnapped, um, and also 99, his sidekick, a uh, beautiful uh, brunette sidekick, was kidnapped. You know, there were secret agents, you know, 99, and then, um, you know, the woman, and, and then him, you know, 86, you know, smart, Maxwell smart. And then he uh, confronts uh, what he said was the claw. But then the Chinese guy, who was called the claw, he was called the claw because he had metal hands. Well, he said, don't call me Mr. Smart, don't call me Claw, call me Ha. <laughs> you know, so it's just said, don't say, it's really for the he, that example, but don't say uh, Ro, say Ro, okay? Protos, spelled out P, Ro, <laughs> Omega with the circumflex overhead, and then a Tau, Omicron with the acute uh, marker. Uh, this is a marker pointing like to 7 o'clock on a regular face clock, and final sigma. So, Protos, protos, or uh, protas, okay, protas. And uh, before, me is mu, okay, okay, 
For he was, and the Greek word uh, ain is there. That's from the Amy paradigm. Trace that word, and it's going to bring you back to Amy in a lexicon. So, Jesus didn't say of the Father he was protos mu. It's very easy to remember. Protos mu. Before me. Okay? You know the ego paradigm. Ego, mu, moi, me. Okay? Sometimes it's in the emphatic uh, emu or emoi or, you know, like that. But, it's not used. It's not used at all. At all. So, let's go back to um, meaning that Jesus never said of the Father that the Father was before Christ, before me. He would have said that if it was true. It's not true. So, I said it. All right, so let's go back to uh, John uh, chapter 8, or Eta, that's 10, okay, all right, so I'll just go all the way to the end, and it's going to stop right there, okay? So, apen autois, apen means said, autois means um, to them, it's in a plural, okay? And uh, that's just the deal, and so then, uh, ha, it's not just the in Greek. Remember, it's called the weak demonstrative. In incidentally, I just want to say something about ha before I go on to, um, well, not really Jesus, because I already went into uh, the word Jesus. I gave you the paradigm. Okay. Um, <clears throat> ha. Um, ha. Okay, <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say, because I'm just jumping around all, the pla all over the place. Oh, yeah, Dan Wallace said in his study of the article, okay, that a word, a noun, can be definite without having an article. There are t 10 different ways that, an article, that, that a noun, a Greek noun, can be definite without an article. Look at that, 10 different, time, 10 different ways, okay? A name is definite without an article, okay? Could be definite without an article, right? Uh, the prepositional phrase, the preposition, okay, and arche doesn't have to have an article but to be definite. It's not a it's not in a beginning, it's in the beginning, right? Even the New World Translation has that, you know what I'm saying? And this app over here. And, uh, and then you have um, you know, um, other situations that you know predicate nominative okay and john won't see that doesn't have to have an article for it to be definite that's what we're trying to tell the witnesses definitely so okay abstract nouns love faith hope etc well those words don't need to have an article in order to be definite and some some numbers don't have to have articles in order for it to be definite and there are about like five or four more you know situations that that is the case okay so just tell the witnesses that okay so we went into that wonderful name jesus that's found 1241 times in niv and 200 and and, and actually uh 970, 971 times in the King James, 917 times in the Greek uh, New Testament. Well, it says over here, Amen, Amen, and that's spelled out. Okay, now let, let's spell out uh, the word uh, Jesus first. Iota, okay, it's a capital I, right? And then Eta. Now it's called Eta, but Eta in Biblical uh, Greek is a, is a eval, long eval. And then you have a Sigma, that looks like an S, and Omicron, that's okay, and Upsilon, that's all right, and Sigma, that's okay, okay. It's just Eta that's a little bit of a problem. That looks like an N to us, but it's not an N. It's actually, um, it's actually a, a vowel, E-class vowel, okay? Long E. So... E E Sus E Sus E Sus Now I mean it's spelled out Alpha Mu nowadays called Mu the the name of this letter M is called Me nowadays Alpha Mu Eta Nu 
or in, in modern Greek, alpha, me, eta, ni. Okay, so you have to be careful with that. Don't blend. I'm just letting you know that it exists, but don't blend the, you know, everything. Just keep it distinct from each other. You're either talking about modern Greek or biblical Greek or the standard Greek. Okay, or the traditional pronunciation or whatever the case may be. Truly, truly, I mean, I mean. Alpha with the soft breathing, so it's not ha, it's ah, okay. And then mu, and then I'm on the I'm on the um. Actually, the sort of uh, one, two, three, four, five. I'm a, I'm on the fourth floor of this verse, okay. Below the um below the um the fifty eight that 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 floor. Okay, where you see A and then you see another word with an A, that's where I'm at. I mean, I mean, it's, 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 it's double there. Okay. Uh, if modern Greeks were to be pronouncing this, it will be Amin, Amin. Amin, Amin. Amin, Amin. Okay. From the this transliterate, this really a transliteration of. Of um, the Hebrew Amen, Amen. The God of the, the Amen is found and recorded in um, around what Isaiah 62 or something like that, 62 or 61. Well, that proves that Jesus is God. The God of the Amen, I mean, so is Jesus called the Amen in Revelation chapter 3, verse 14? He is. He is the great Amen. But anyway, he says, Amen, Amen. He doesn't say, Thus say of the Lord. Jesus never said in the four Gospels, He never said, Thus say of the Lord. Why? Because He is Yahweh. He is Yahweh. Now, if you're limiting Jesus to be only Lord and not God, and the Father, God, well, you have to limit Him and say he's only God and not Lord. And you're going to have a difficulty there in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6, because I could bring you back to you know, Genesis chapter 2, where it says, and the Lord God, uh, which one is Jesus? If he's Lord, well, he's he has a tetragrammaton attached to him, so he's Jehovah. Well, if he's God, then he's Elohim. Right. And then you have a bigger problem in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse uh, Verse, uh, let's get there. Deuteronomy according to the Hebrew. You know what I'm saying? Deuteronomy. <coughs> <coughs> this is delicious. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. Okay, so let me get that. And let's read the Hebrew. Okay, praise the Lord. He gets the glory, not me. It says over here, okay. Let's see. Um, let's make sure it's verse 4. Let me see, I got verse 4 over here. Verse 4. This is do. At least I could count the witnesses. I mean, I don't think they can count all the way to 4. But, I mean, you know, Charles Chase Russell only went to the 4th. I mean, to the 7th grade, excuse me. I don't want to. I don't want to. Leave him back a grade. God forbid he will go all the way back to, you know, the second grade. Joseph Smith only went to the second grade, so I don't want to put him in the same class now. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Well, what happened here, huh? Let's see. Um, it's Deuteronomy chapter 6. I got to do it again. Sorry, guys. I mean, if you're going to say that God the Father is God, and Jesus is only Lord but not God. Oh, you're doing me a favor, actually. Because now you're bracketing Jesus to be Jehovah. And um, and you're calling him, you're calling him Jehovah. Okay? That's just the deal. Now, um, okay, here it goes. It says, Shama Yisrael Yahweh. It says over here. Okay, Yahweh Elohim, Yahweh Echad. 
That's a very short verse. I didn't know it was that short. Actually, you could remember this. You understand what I'm saying? Shema means to, it says here, it also means to, op it can mean obey, and it can mean listen. Shema is spelled out. Let me, let me, um, let me, uh, I can't do that though. Let me, okay, let me do this. <laughs> okay. Let me, um, enlarge it because I want to look at the diacritics underneath it. Okay. So let me look at accessibility. All right. Let me go to magnification. Let me go there. And let me poke the bear. And let me go back. And that's just it. Praise God. Okay. And it goes all the way back. I actually can't take that though. At least the English, the the Greek one, it stays right at the spot. It just doesn't do that in this app. I just it's very hard to read Hebrew sometimes um, because of the the verses. I mean, not to read the Hebrew, but because it's just not so clear what part is verse four. But since we know it, well, that's verse four. You know, it's just, you see the five over there and the four of us. Very inconsistent. I wish it was better delineated, you know what I mean? But anyway, we're stuck. We have what we have. Okay, let me just uh, put, let me fill in there. It says over here, Shema. Shema, Shema. Shema is spelled out Sheen. Leonard Nimoy, Mr. Spack from Star Trek, used to call it Shin, not She. So it's not a sin to call uh, a Sheen Shin. Okay, so. The dot over, I'm, I'm where you see the word here. Remember you read Hebrew from right to left. And so there's a W looking letter, right? Next to the four. Okay, so just go from, from the four to, to, the, to the left, you know. From right to left. And you see like a W looking letter. There's not a W in Hebrew. That's a, that can be an SH or it can be an S. Well, what's the clue? Well, if... if if the dot, which is called a sheen dot in this situation, is above the upper right-hand corner of the letter, okay, like in Moshe, like in Moses' name, well, that's a SH. It's a, it's a sheen or a shin. But if it's above the left upper portion, okay, if it's above the left upper, upper portion of the upper portion of the letter, it's a scene or a sin. Okay? Ah! I thought that was my stepdaughter. Well, that be a uh, you know that's the that's the clue for if it's a S or a you know S or a, a, a SH. And then you have the sere, uh You have the um of underneath it there. Um, the sheva underneath that. I forgot what those two dots are. This is I haven't I haven't uh, read Hebrew in a, in a while like that. Uh, I think that's called a sheva underneath it. Not the sere, but Sheva. I think that's what it's called. I forgot those two dots. So what is what's that called? Okay. But anyway, um, so so you have the sh, and then you have the the mem with the patach. I remember that. And then a patach is is an is a ah sound in uh, you know, like in hat in in uh, biblical uh, Hebrew. This stuff is not Hebrew anyway. It's Babylonian script. Okay. So um. That's actually the that's it that's the word right there basically in the in the ayin it's actually silent okay it's a silent letter anyway just like you know uh, aleph is okay so um, so shema and so um, and then you have Yisrael okay so let me see let me poke the bear here and you see that. Um, the Yod in, in Israel or Yisrael. And then you have um, uh, a Sheva underneath that, underneath the, the S letter now, right? Because the dot is in a different location. You see that the dot is in a different location. Let me put it side by side, okay? You see that the dot above the first letter in here, Shema, is above the right upper corner of the letter okay but now in the word for Yisrael is above the left upper corner and that means it's an S okay Yisrael 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 
Okay, so um, that's spelled out. Yod, Sin, and then, um, okay, Hresh, that's the R, so like a backwards R in, in Hebrew, and then you have the comments underneath. It looks like a little T, that's an A class, like in the word, okay, a father, okay? There is no distinction in modern uh, Hebrew between the patach and we saw that in uh, the last word okay shama shama and then uh, and the comments but in in biblical greek there a uh, biblical, he biblical hebrew there is a distinction okay and then you have the aleph with the sere okay that's an a sound that's an e class right and then you have the syllable uh, marker underneath okay um, that uh, aleph there and then uh, that's where the emphasis should go, okay? It's just like the acute marker and stuff like that in, in Greek. And then the Lamed, um, the Lamed is actually the L in Hebrew, okay? Yisrael. El, we all know, that's, that's uh, the short, there's a singular version of um, Elohim. That's the singular uh, for uh, God, okay? Oh, Yisrael. Shama Yisrael, the Lord, okay, the Lord. The Tetragrammaton is found there, and is the Shama. So Shama Yisrael Yahweh. Yod with the Sheva, okay, and then He, and then um, and then uh, Vav or Wow. And then hey, actually the meaning of each letter of the Tetragrammaton goes something like this. Now remember that that Yahweh. Okay, I'm gonna pronounce it like that. You can say Jehovah. I don't really mind. Incidentally, this the Tetragrammaton is found and recorded. Okay, according to Vines Complete Expository Dictionary of all the New Testament words. Okay, six thousand eight hundred and twenty-eight times. According to Mounce's Complete Expository Dictionary of Old and New Testament and all of uh, <laughs> New Testament words, it's found uh, 6,829 times. Okay? Um, the better treatise is actually in Mounce's Complete Expository Dictionary. Okay? That is more complete than mine's by a mile. Okay? It has all the Hebrew and Greek words of the Bible. Actually, Mounce's does. It just has a couple of typos in it that they have to, you know, fix. Like, uh, you know, uh, Marfe being found in, you know, Mark chapter 16, verse 14. It's not found there. It's found in verse 12. So, typos like that, you know. But he says, Mounce says that, um, that uh, Yahweh is, is the third person form of Haya and then Echyech. Uh, is, is, is the third person form of Haya, and Echyech is the first person form of Haya, okay? So, Yod means hand, He means behold, and Vav means, or Wow means nail, like the nail you put into, a, uh, into the wall, and then He means behold. So, hand, behold, nail, behold. That's the gospel right there in the Tathagramaton. The gospel is right there. The hand of Christ... Okay, behold, the nail that was driven into that hand, plus his feet, behold. That's the gospel right there in the Tathagramaton. You understand what I mean? Alright, so, Shema Yisrael, Yahweh, Elohim. Okay, it says over here, our God... Okay, actually, um, it'll be like this. It's a different construction. Okay. Okay. It says over here. Okay. Elohenu. Elohenu. Our? Well, nu. That's our there. Okay, that's the nu. Where, where's our or no, in, in, in the back of the word? You have nu attached to it. Okay, remember nu means uh, us or our, okay? Like, uh, uh, la nu, who will go for us, right? Who will go for us? And uh, that's found in recorded in Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8. Who will go for us? To me, proving the Trinity, okay? 
Naase. Naase. Let us make. Okay. Us. Make. Okay. From asa to make. Right. Or nu means us here. Our. Okay. Hello. Henu. Hello Henu. Hello Henu. Our God. And then you have the Tetragrammaton again, Yahweh. Okay, oops. I hope I can find it again. Echad. Now the adjective goes after the noun. It's going after the noun here, Yahweh. Echad. Incidentally, is is not there, but Echad. Well, that's spelled out. Aleph with the Segol. Cluster means cluster of grapes, by the way, right? Segol. So that's E. And then you have Chet with the Kamets underneath. So Echa. And then the final syllable is um, is capped off with a D sound. Dalet. Okay, Dalet, which means door. Echad. Echad. Okay? Echad. Aleph, Chet, Dalet. Okay? Echad. Now, this is... This is it's, it doesn't say incidentally. I mean, if you want God being one, this is not this is not the verse. I'm not gonna get it, but you see it in Deuteronomy chapter four, verses thirty-five and thirty-nine. This is not saying that that God is one, okay? And I believe that God is one according to the Greek construction in Galatians chapter three, verse twenty. Hate as estin heis or heis, okay? I was putting that <laughs> and bringing it to the Greek though. So I believe that God is one. But we're not talking about that. It says that Yahweh is one. Incidentally, this same Hebrew word is, is found in Genesis chapter 2 for one flesh. Okay, all right? Basar, basar echad. One flesh. The two shall be one flesh. You understand what I'm saying? That's what it says. The two shall be one flesh. If you want something echadim... And Brown, Driver, and Briggs, it gives you all these different kind of constructions, okay, of the of Echad. Well, Echad can mean 11 altogether. Or, you know, it, it doesn't mean only one. I try to tell, uh, you know, my friend uh, that I debated, you know, Alexander Cruz, where I, which I beat him in that debate, praise the Lord, in the Great Trinity debate. Check, just take, just punch in Great Trinity debate, the Great Trinity debate, and you see um, our debate there. And I try to tell them there's a semantic range that doesn't only mean one, okay? It could mean few. And incidentally, Echadim is found and recorded, okay, in, um, I believe, isn't it like uh, chapter 27 of Genesis, I don't know, verse 45 or something like that. I forgot where it is, verse 41, 45, 47, whatever the case may be. And it's talking about um, the story of the mother of Jacob telling Jacob to go to Laban's house uh, for a few days, Echadim, for a few days until the fury of your brother cools off, says the English translation. But you see, Echadim, Echad, being used there for few. Okay? Could it mean the Lord your God is a few persons? I just, you know, it's just. Is one in unity? what it says but if you're saying that that according to um according to uh uh first corinthians chapter 8 verse 6 that that jesus is only lord and not god well you're doing me a bigger favor because you're bracketing him to be yahweh according to passages that should have been translated jehovah like uh you know what verse 13 chapter 2 of philippians i guess that's the one right there and new First Peter chapter three verse fifteen should have been uh, translated there. You know, um, sanctify Christ as Jehovah should have said in your heart, being a quotation, and the formula should have stood. A quotation from Isaiah chapter uh, eight verse thirteen, but they didn't do that. They broke the formula. I wonder why. Because then you, they were stuck in calling Jesus Jehovah. They knew that when they were doing the stuff. 
hiding the deity of Christ, hiding the deity of the Holy Spirit, calling him spirit and not the spirit, by the way. It seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to Ash. Oh, can the Holy Spirit be a force? According to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 15, around verse 28, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit. Oh, really? So he appointed, uh, you know, um, deacons or bishops in Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Really? So a force is just appointing stuff, right? Get lost, please. Okay, you understand what I mean? You Jeho Jehovah's Witnesses out there. To you Jehovah's Witnesses that want to really learn that you were deceived, welcome. And we love you. All right. Yahweh Echad. One. So you do me a favor. If he's only Lord, well, it's only one Lord. The Lord is Yahweh here. The Lord your God is, is one Lord. Lord our God is one Lord. Let me read it again. It says over here. It's quite clear. It says, um, <clears throat> Shema Yisrael Yahweh Elohenu Yahweh Chad. You see? That's just it. I and the Father and of our Echad. It uses the same Hebrew uh, word found and recorded here, and it's also found and recorded in the 1817 uh, Jewish New Testament, Hebrew New Testament, translated by T. Frey, F. R. E. Y. and G. G. Collier, C. O. L. Y. E. R. 1817. Incidentally, that one in the 1880 edition of the of the Hebrew New Testament actually has recorded Jesus saying ech yech of himself. No one can say that they're ech yech, ech yech except for God, the living God of Israel. All right, guys, let's get back. Let's get back to um, John chapter 8, verse 58, and so let's finish. Apen autois ka Jesus. Amen, amen. Truly, truly, lego. That's the that's the present active indicative form. Okay, lego. I say. Okay, uh, you know the paradigm. Lego, leges, lege. Leges will be lambda, epsilon, gamma, uh, epsilon, delta, sigma, and then the other one will be the third person. Um, leges will be you say, and then um, lege will be he, she, or it says, right? Um, lege will be uh, lambda, epsilon, gamma, epsilon, yoda. That'll be that paradigm, you know. And then you get into the plural part of the paradigm and, and all of that other good stuff. Okay. Lego. Spell that lambda, epsilon with the acute marker. So le. And then gamma, omega, go. Lego. I say, who mean? Do you? That's an dative case. Construction. What is a dative case? Well, you know, just add the word to. Okay, there. To, with, in, in your translations according to the context. Who mean is the second person personal pronoun from the ego part of the paradigm, actually. So it's, it's, it's in the same paradigm. Okay. What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about that humin, okay, is a second person personal pronoun from the singular, um, or from the uh, plural, sorry, from the plural part of the paradigm, okay? Okay, humin, that's plural, actually. Humin. Okay. So that's plural. <laughs> And it's spelled out upsilon with the rough reading, so that's who. And so you got mu, iota with the circumflex, and then nu. Um, so, who mean? <clears throat> now, um, he's talking to these uh, jewels. Truly, truly, I say, let go to you. Okay, so that's the second person personal pronoun. He's speaking to these Jews, okay? I mean, I mean, lego, who mean, it says, prin, okay, is before, prin, okay, piro, yota with the graph marker this time, 
a decline of accent, and then you have nu. So prin or prin. Abraham, okay, it doesn't even have the article there, okay, but we know that's definite, and that's one of the situations that I'm talking about that a noun can be definite without an article. It will be ha Abraham if it will have the article, it doesn't need the article to be definite. That's my argument, okay. So, capital alpha, beta, rho, alpha, alpha. With the graph marker overhead and then mu. Abraham. Abraham. Now, what is the magic? I hate to say magic, though, but what is the, the, the killer verb here that we can use okay, to prove that it's not used for Jesus? Okay. Before, check this out. Does it say. In any verse of scripture, before um, before Jesus began to be, I am. Did the Father ever said that? No. Genethai. Okay. And that's in the passive construction there. Thai. Right? Began to be. Genethai. Okay. Gamma, Epsilon, Nu, Epsilon with the acute marker, Sigma, Theta, nowadays called Theta, and then Alpha, Iota, and that diphthong is pronounced I in Biblical Greek, but according to modern Greek, it's pronounced E. Eh. Before Abraham existed, or began to be, Genestai Ego Amy. Now, like I said before, Ego Amy, I mean, it's nice. But the Hebrew New Testament uh, of 1817 and 1880 actually says, eh, yeah. That's what it says. And that was pointed out by ex Jehovah's Witness. Uh, um, his name was Ted Densher, and he wrote a book entitled Why I Left Jehovah's Witnesses, okay? Why I Left Jehovah's Witnesses, because you have to leave. You have to make a decision. You can't be neutral like Mark from Missouri, you understand what I'm saying? I love Mark, but you can't be neutral. You have to leave. You have to make a decision. You can't be a Berean all the days of your life. In other words, you can't say, well, let me study to see if the house is on fire. I mean, I know it's on fire, but let me just stay in here and let, let me check out the Greek word pure and the Hebrew word ish. And let me see if the word, let me make my study. I know people are hollering out, shade for me to get out of this house. I, let me, but let me stay in here in just a couple of more days. I mean, who does that stuff? So why are you doing it now? I mean, you, you, you made your studies already. You see that Jesus is good. And man, you put the two together and he's the God man. And so the tower was wrong. He's not the Archangel Michael. Okay? And Archein Ha Angelas or and Archein Ha Michael doesn't exist in John 1 1. So why stay in the watchtower? Okay? Just don't burn the books though. We need those. Okay? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? We need all the books that you got, okay, to prove the witness is wrong. Okay, just don't burn those books. You know what I mean? Well, burn them. Burn them if you're not going to you know, give them to anywhere, any to anybody. But we're going to sell them on Amazon. That's the, that's the tools that we need. <laughs> okay, like the kingdom interlinear. Save those guys. Okay? Yeah, you're going to see it in the kingdom interlinear in John 1.1. 1, 1, it's recorded in, uh, you know, in, uh, and history can't be broken. That it says, you know, and God was the word. I mean, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a walking contradiction in the kingdom. It's a linear. You know what I mean? E pen autois ha Jesus. E men e men lego humin. Prin Abraham genestai ego eimi. Now, you may say, well, how about the Hebrew, um, how about 
the Hebrew uh, New Testament, you mentioned too, Ted Dencher, like I said, uh, mentioned, uh, on page 100, 153, this is, this is how it began, okay? Around, 19, uh, around 1961 or 1962, Jehovah's Witnesses wrote a pamphlet entitled, or a booklet entitled, okay, The Word, Who Is He? The Word, Who Is He? Talking about Logos. Right well, now, on page 36, Ted Dentra says in his book, Why I Left Jehovah's Witnesses, on page 153, he said that they said on page 36, meaning the JW said on page 36, you know, in that pamphlet, entitled the word who is he that jesus quote jesus spoke in the hebrew of his day and not in greek end quote well we disagree with that but we can use it because why well they're doing they're fighting half of my battle i don't have to prove that jesus spoke in hebrew they already said it so i don't have to go out and prove that jesus spoke in hebrew i mean i don't have to they, they said it themselves you know what i mean so the, the battle's half one right there so they shoot themselves in the stinking foot every single time. Okay, this time they used a knife, and so they, they squeezed it hard. Okay. All right, right through the tent, right through the tent, you know. Just like a woman put a, 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 a tent peg right through the, the, the temple of a man, and she was called blessed for it in the Old Testament. So they take a, a tent peg and put it, right through their feet, okay, and stamp themselves in history of being frauds. And so the thing is that we can use what they said in, in 1961 or 62. And then they, Jesus spoke in the Hebrew of his day and not in Greek. Okay, fine. We, we disagree with him. Let's take it. Let's use it. Okay. And so, all right. So, we use it. And so they pop out on page 36, two Hebrew New Testaments that Jesus did not say Ech Yaakov himself. He just probably said Ani, which is a re very regular form, I am. You know, I can say Ani Angelo when I'm speaking to a Hebrew. You understand what I mean? You know what I mean? All right, so I can say Ani. I mean, it's no problem. Incidentally, if the Jehovah's Witness will say, well, how about the blind man? Ha 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 ha. In John chapter 9 of the Hebrew uh, 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 Testaments that you're talking about, Angelo, of 1817-1880, how about the blind man? He probably said, Echek also, right? No way. He would have been killed right there on the spot. He said, Ani who? I am he. Who means he in Hebrew. And Ani means I am. Okay, I checked that out just to see what it is before I talk to a witness. Well, he just said, Ani who? I am he. He didn't say, Echek though. And so Ted Dentcher, getting back to his book, uh, Why I Left Jehovah's Witnesses, said, well, just as easily as they popped out uh, to uh, Hebrew uh, New Testament saying that Jesus uh, never said Echkeh for himself, I can just as easily pop out, okay, uh, two Hebrew New Testaments, okay, one written in 1817 uh, from the Texas Receptus. It was translated from the Texas Receptus, which is a nice text, though, I mean, you know. And the other one, was done in 1880. So one was done in 1817, the other one was done in 1880, and where Jesus did say Echiak of himself. So what are you going to do with that? Okay. All right. Now, let's get back to this. Again, a pen, okay, said, I'll toys to them Ha Jesus, the Jesus, but anyway, that, that doesn't the, the doesn't mean anything, basically in English. They don't say the Jesus. Ha Jesus, Amen, Amen, truly, truly, let go, I say to you, who mean bring before Abraham Genestai existed. Or came into existence, okay? Ego Amy. Now, why doesn't it say Ego Amy or on? Well, he probably wasn't you know, quoting from the Greek Septuagint. Sometimes he did, sometimes he did. Didn't. Okay? Alright? Now, the clue that he was committing to them, 
to those Jews, okay? Blasphemy was, well, this is the next statement it says over here, okay? Eran, it says over here, un, okay, lithoi, li, lithos. Well, that's the accusative of a plural, okay, all right, for stones. So these were big stones. Lithos, I mean, lithos, I mean, in, in Kenneth's writings, okay, sometimes um, refer to big, big stones, okay? I mean, you have Petra, Petras, and Lith, you know, Lithos, I mean... Incidentally, you can do a study on that, uh, and, uh, and actually, Julius Armanti did a study. Uh, was Peter a was Peter a pope? And he uses uh, Kenneth's writings, okay, to actually uh, showcase the difference between Petra, Petras, and Lithos at times. And so they picked up stones, and they just. They just uh, if he was just saying, I just existed before Abraham, I mean, what's the big deal? Why would they wouldn't have picked up stones to, to cast, you know, lithos? I mean, these were big stones. They were going to kill him. And look at this. Balosin. I mean, uh, b from Balo. Actually, I think the, um, the lexical form, isn't it? Uh, uh, Beta, Alpha, Lambda, Lambda, Omega. I have to check that out, though. But anyway. Okay, Balosin. I mean, <laughs> it's going to throw. Okay. Casting, you know, Ep and then Altan. Upon him. Jesus. But. So this idea that, that he just said something normal. Why would they pick up these little lithos? Okay. Why would they pick them up? Why didn't he say, no, I'm not saying I'm not the great I am. I mean, I'm just saying that, you know. Why? All right. I mean, this is this is the deal. I mean, he says, Ego Amy. I am. And maybe they didn't let him finish. Maybe he was going to say, Ego Amy, hold on. And then they broke him off. And Ego Amy, who knows? I don't know. I wasn't there. Okay. Maybe he would have finished the passage from uh, the Greek Septuagint, but maybe they didn't let him finish, though. You know what I mean? Ego Amy. I am. Well, the blind man said, I am, didn't he? Yeah, but it wasn't a religious context. I mean, he was just identifying himself. Yeah, I am the man. I, 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 I am. Now, where is that? Is that in uh, um, chapter 9? That's in, um, let me see chapter 9 here, okay? That'll be in chapter, uh, 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 what? Chapter Theta. Okay, I mean, so let's check that out, though. All right, I mean, verse, uh, verse I believe is in verse 9, though. And this study is very, very long, so I might let you go now before I even find us. Okay, so um, verse verse 9 is here. And that's verse 8, though. Where is 9? Hey, right here. But, let me see, alloy, alloy. Alloy, let me see over here. Wait, alloy. Elegan, uh, hati, altas. Estin, let me see. Aloy de Hati. <clears throat> let me see if it's here. Again, da, 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 da. ego. Yeah, ego Amy. He said ego Amy right over here, right before 10. Ego Amy. So, I mean. But he didn't say before Abraham began to be I am. He was just saying, yeah, that, that's me. I'm, this is, it's me. You're talking, you know, this this I am. I'm he. It's not a re religious context, though. They go, Amy, so what? I am. 
I don't see that they're throwing stones at him. I mean, see? I don't see that throwing stones at him in verse 11. Okay? I don't see it. I don't see it. Now, okay, so we established the fact that Jesus said, I am. The great I am. Okay? The great I am. Now, let's check out the Greek Septuagint, though. Okay? And, uh... Let's check out, uh, see here, though, okay? Um, that'll be in Exodus, though. Exodus chapter, uh, 3, around verse 15. Okay, all right? Let's go slowly here. Um, let me see here. No, that's, uh, that's chapter, this, let me go back, though. Chapter 3, around verse 15. Let me see. Okay, it says, Kai a pen and set half a ass. Okay, a palin a pras mousin mousin autos eresimisitois. We are the sons Israel. Kurios, hate us. Oh, wait a minute. Well, which one is Jesus? Is he Kurios? And he's the Tatagamaton. If he's hate us, he's God. Don um, Patron. That's in the genitive plural. Um, masculine, right? Patron. Um, f f fathers there, Petron. Okay, that's a genitive plural for fathers. Humon, that's a uh, second person personal pronoun from the plural part of the paradigm and the genitive side of things. Theas Abraham. Theas Abraham Kai Theas Isaac Kai Theas. Jacob. Apostalken, okay, um, has sent. That's because of the, I think that's in the perfect tense because of the kappa there. Me, apostalken me. So, incidentally, Jehovah says the same thing of Jehovah, meaning that he's, Jehovah sent Jehovah. Jehovah sent me. He has sent me. Jehovah speaking in verse 8. Of Zechariah chapter 2, according to the English text, I think verse 12, according to the Masoretic text copies that we have nowadays, okay, that has verses. Well, according to the Greek Septuagint, okay, I mean, it's apostalken, apostalken me has sent me. Well, that's the same thing found for, well, you know, Je Jehovah was speaking in verse, let's keep it to verse 8. In verse 8 of Zechariah chapter 2, Jehovah is speaking. And then he says in verse 9 uh, that, uh, that Yahweh sent him. Come on, man. Yahweh sent Yahweh. Jehovah sent Jehovah. Please. Ape stalken me. Okay. Pras. Okay. To the sons. Uh, hu, uh, huyas, uh, to. Uh, no, no, not sons. It's uh, uh, hu, humas. Okay. And. Um, <coughs> that's in the. Uh, that's in the. Uh, uh, the. The accusative um, plural, okay, uh, 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 second person personal pronoun, okay, uh, uh, tuta, this, okay, then mu estin, this is my name, okay, uh, anama, incidentally, it doesn't say uh, in uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 around there. In the names, Anamata, you see Anamata actually in uh, chapter 10 of Matthew, the same book. But is Anama, the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Ionian, um, everlasting, and um, and it says over here, uh, Mene. Mene Masunan uh, 
Ge-ne-on. Now, generations. Generations. ge ne eyes. Um, let me see. I think then it might be in verse 4. Okay? In verse 14, I should, I should say rather. So let me just go back to verse 14. Kai a pen and God. Uh, it says over here. Kai a pen hate as and said the God, right? Or just, you know, God. Uh, pras to, um, and pras is a proposition. Okay, uh, kamin to. Um, it says, uh, moi u sin. Okay, um, was the process taking the accusative uh, case construction. Uh, mo u sin. Ego emi ho on. Okay, ego emi ho on. Kai uh, apen uh, autos. Okay, uh, say, uh, it says over here, uh, eres, eres tois, uh, hui ois, okay, that's in the date of uh, sons, uh, sons of Israel, uh, ho on, okay, ape stauken has sent me, uh, man, there, uh, to. Humas uh, to you, pras humas. Okay, so you see, her own twice over here. Now, okay, so what's the deal? Is Jesus called her own in the New Testament, and we'll just all let you go. Well, he's not only called her own; he's called a whole bunch of stuff in um, Revelation chapter one, verse uh, eight. And when this, I'll let you go. Okay, let's check this off. Now, um, let's get this app over here. Okay, this one. I just used that one, so let's check this out. Let's go Let's go backwards, actually, over here. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so let me go over here. I have the New World Translation right there, by the way. Now, so let's go to Revelation. Okay, and let's go to verse, um, verse 8. Okay, so let's just get there. Um, that's verse 8 right there. Now remember in verse 7, it can say that every eye shall see him, and those who pierce, them, uh, pierce him shall see him, okay? The identification is Christ, okay? Nation shall mourn, even so. Amen, it says over here. All right, let's check out verse 8, okay? It says, Ego Amy, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Now, the Alpha and Omega, why did he say... I go Amy her own. Well, according to the Jehovah's Witnesses, when you ask them who's Alpha and Omega, they're gonna say Jehovah. Well, why didn't he say over here? You're saying that Jesus didn't say I go Amy her own. Why didn't he say I go Amy her own? Right? I mean, I go Amy own right off the bat. I go Amy her own. He doesn't say it. Okay. But we all know that this is Jesus because he's the one that's coming in this text. It says over here, okay, and let me just read it. Ego Amy, Ego Amy Ta Alpha, Kai Ta Omega, Lege, and we saw that already. Lege, oh, we actually saw Lego. Lege, uh, Kurias, Hate As, Haon, or Haon, Kai Ho In, Kai Ho El Komenos. Okay, Ha Panto Krator. I mean, let me see how many titles Jesus has over here. Well, first of all, Ego Amy is called that. Ego Amy. Ego Amy. And then he's called Ego Amy. And then Alpha and Omega. You have to put that like one title, right? Alpha and Omega. So that's two. Lege. And then Kurias. Look at that. Kurias, that's three. Hapeas, that's four. Haon, that's five. Okay. The one who was, that's six. The one who is coming, that's seven. Okay. And number eight, Patokrator, he's caught eight things here. He's caught everything that Jehovah Witnesses say that Jesus is not. And not and not. Okay? Is that true? Is that clear? Ego, he's called Ego Amy. Ego Amy Ta Alpha Kai Ta Omega. Incidentally, Omega was not, you know, originally the last letter of the 
Greek alphabet, I was Parakisma. That was the last letter. There were at least 27 Greek letters in the alphabet, in the Greek alphabet. They were just, they were just dropped off. Three of those letters were dropped off. Also, if you know your Greek alphabet, that can help you in Coptic, uh, the, in, in, in reading Coptic, uh, the Coptic letters, because the, the Egyptians, <clears throat> they borrowed around 25 or so letters from, um, from, from Greek, around 24 or 25 letters from the Greek alphabet. Okay? So basically, you already know how to read more than 90% of the Coptic alphabet. And there are Coptic Christians out there being persecuted, okay, in Egypt and other uh, countries, okay? So, uh, remember that Isaiah chapter 19, I believe it said, that, um, that Egyptians will praise the Lord, you know, some of them anyway. There is a prophecy. Ego emi ta alpha kai ta omega. This is basically, these are the only letters that are um, in the New Testament that are you know, seen like this, that the alpha is just seen in and of it by itself, okay? And omega is seen, okay? So, um, the, uh, let me see over here, I want to see something. A ta is actually a singular article appointing to an, a neuter, uh, uh, a neuter, a neuter letter neuter okay or a neuter construction so this is neuter the omega is neuter and al and alpha is neuter it says ta alpha ta omega or ta alpha chi ta omega so he's called the alpha and omega okay and then lege uh, and that's in the third person lege says okay uh the lord god now um kurios it doesn't have an article, but it doesn't need it because uh, uh, Theos has an article. So, Kurias is also definite. Okay? You can tell that to the witnesses. Okay? Lege Kurias Ha Theos. So, he's called Theos, Ha Theos, incidentally, and Kurias. Ha On. The one who is or the being, right? Ha On. That's a participle there, um, ho'on, a present participle. The omega and the nu are the clues for the participial construction here. Okay, I mean, this is, this is only a couple of letters, but, you know, the thing is that that's a, uh, this is a verbal adjective, right? A verbal adjective, ho'on. Ha'on. Okay, so that's spelled out omega and nu. And then over the omega, you got a soft breathing marker and a graph marker. On. Okay, the one who is and the one who was. Okay, ha'on kai ha'in. Okay. So you have a masculine uh, article for in there. Okay, in. Well, actually, it doesn't really go like that. It's just that that um, the one, remember that the article can do several nice things and it could be a pronoun. The one comes from ha. So that is used as a, uh, a pronoun. Ha is being used uh, as a, a pronoun. So you can see the one uh, who was, okay, so it's uh, the one one it, it's really found in this in this weak demonstrative here the one who uh, is and the one who was so ha is is much more than da here okay the one you can say the one the one who is the one who was and the one uh, who is to come Okay, er cha me nas er The one who's coming. Well, who's coming? Christ. Is the Father gonna come on clouds of glory? The Son is gonna come. 
and clouds of glory. So you know the identification of the Lord God. And that's just the deal. I mean, you, you, what's the, who's the, who, listen, who is this verse referring to? It has to be Christ because he's the one who's coming. Why? Well, it said it in, uh, in the verse 7. Verse 7 is talking about Christ, the second coming. And not invisible coming, by the way. You understand what I'm saying? Aratas parousia never appear a back to back and a belly to belly like John Sterling of the New York, Sterling of the New York Yankees likes, likes to say. Invisible? presence it doesn't say that nowhere in the bible so i don't know why the sign of the son of man was even published okay way back in you know 1974 i should have ripped that article out by the way kept that article i couldn't have, I, I couldn't bring all my books to the philippines because of the just the weight i should have just ripped that article out though <laughs> i should have ripped it out but i wasn't thinking really um too sharply about bringing certain things you know if i would have done it all over again i would have come later to the philippines you know but you know I wanted to get married, and I and I did, and I have a baby daughter named Anna Devane now. The mother is uh, Risa Tapayet, now Quinones, you know. So I mean, you know, I could I could get things back, I guess, you know. And you can check out those articles online, but it's not the same thing as as, as having the the tangible uh, source, you know. But it says in verse seven, it says, "Idu lek erchetai." Huh? One coming with, okay, ton nefelon, with the clouds, okay, with the clouds, see? But look at it, erchetai, there's a connecting vowel over there, epsilon, erchetai, the one coming in clouds, ton nefelon, ton nefelon, kai afetai, Okay, and as uh, they will see him, Altan, him, every pass, okay, uh, of Thalmas, and it says over here, Hoitines Altan, Esekin. Tesan, okay, exe ken tesan, and it says over here, kapsantai ep autan pasai, okay, uh, hi fulai. <coughs> It says, taste, gaze, as the earth, nigh, amen. This is quite clear that this has to do with Christ's second coming on clouds over here. Okay? Let me see over here. Where's clouds again? Idu erchetai, a meta, and that's a preposition, meta. Okay, all right, and it's taking the, the genitive case uh, construction here, ton nevelon. Yeah, so coming with the clouds, with the clouds. Now, <clears throat> I mean, you have like three propositions for him coming in the clouds, with the clouds, and I think para alongside the clouds so, so i mean it's just i mean i guess it's going to be enveloped okay <laughs> except for um you know um a part of his personage will be seen so his head will be seen and and, and it says with the clouds okay so it says n meta and i believe it says para but i know that n and meta are in the Synoptic Gospels. Just read, um, you know, Matthew chapter 24, uh, Mark chapter 13, and uh, Luke chapter 21. My wife was reading uh, Luke chapter 21 the other day to see those prepositions. This is Angelo Quinones giving glory to God the Father, to the Lord Jesus Christ. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And that means that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were still alive. That's what it really meant. Number two, 
it really means, okay, that we have a great hope. What, what, what does all this all mean? We have a great hope that we have to share to the witnesses. They, they, they have no hope beyond the grave, okay? So we have to share this hope. We have to share the truth of the real Jesus, the real McCoy. You can't be saved without acknowledging that Jesus is Yahweh. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13. You have to call upon the name of Jesus. You have to pray to Jesus. That's the problem with the witnesses, that they don't believe that he should be prayed to. If you don't pray to Jesus, you're not going to be saved. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. John chapter 14, verse 14. Okay? Stephen prayed to Jesus. Jesus received my spirit. I read uh, verses uh, 59 and 60 of Praxis of Apostle on the Acts of the Apostles. Read that. Also, okay, those who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. I mean, that's in verse 2 of chapter uh, 1 of 1 Corinthians. Also, Paul entreated the Lord three times, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Okay? Uh, Paul thanked Jesus, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. Okay? Saul, before he became Paul, uh, was talking to Jesus. I am Jesus who you are persecuting. Who, who are you, Lord? I'm Jesus. You see, all those, okay, um, sort of praying chapters. So if you don't pray to Jesus, you're lost and you're doomed. Okay, so um, please give me a thumbs up. Or thumbs up, thumbs down. Please leave your commentary on the screen. Please subscribe to my channel. And I hope that you, um, you know, I hope that you uh, <clears throat> like this study on uh, the study of uh, John chapter, John chapter 8, verse 58. Okay, full Greek construction of this, of this uh, of verse. And, um... I hope that you see that Jesus is the great I am. Okay? These nine I am sayings, the nine I am sayings, it's not seven. Actually, nine I am sayings, okay, I'm the bread of life, I'm the light of the world. Bread of life, I think it's recorded in John chapter 6, verse 35, around there. I am the light of the world, uh, verse 12, chapter 8. I am um, the door, and... Um, I believe it says Dalet in, in the Hebrew uh, New Testament, and that's verse 9 of, of chapter uh, 10 of John. And I am the good shepherd, okay? Um, it's found twice, him being the shepherd. Uh, and uh, in verse, uh, verses 11 and 14, and I am the resurrection and the life, okay? The resurrection and life, that's chapter 11. Around verse 25, something like that. I am the way and the truth, the way and the truth and the life. So those are three I am sayings there. Okay, you have seven verses of I am sayings, but you got, okay, nine I am sayings in all. Okay, the Greek word hadas for way. And um, I, I believe Derek uh, for way in uh, Hebrew. I am, uh, uh, says uh, haderek, uh, the way. And, uh, the truth and the life, Greek word Zoe for life, hey Zoe, and hey Hadas actually, uh, it's a feminine word, Hadas, hey Hadas actually, so that's kind of strange, so sort of second declension word, and then it's, it's, it's feminine, it's kind of, you know, odd, and so, and then I am the true vine, and that was in chapter 14, uh, verse 6, uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus said, and then I am the true vine, Verse 1, I believe, chapter 15 of John. All of those things, okay, describe Jehovah. Okay, those titles describe Jehovah in the Old Testament. And he's using him for himself in the New Testament. The Old Testament is in the Old Contained. The New Testament is in the New Explained. The Old Testament is in the Old Concealed. The New Testament is in the New Revealed. This is Angelo Quinones giving glory to the God of Israel. Take care, guys.